Well, each week a group of insiders joins me to offer perspective on some of the week's top stories. This week sounding off on uh, some tech related uh, items, including a new tech census that will focus on culture uh, in tech companies around the state of Indiana. Plus, the Children's Museum is digging a new uh, dinosaur project and a big schedule change at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Our insiders this week are Katz Corn Cunningham co-founding partner Norris Cunningham. Also, Bose Public Affairs Group Principal Roger Harvey and Vox Global Senior Vice President Francesca Jarose Brady. And welcome one and all to the uh, Insiders uh, on a busy week and uh, a lot um, a lot of activity on the tech scene this week. A couple things, uh, Roger. One, uh, an annual tech uh, uh, survey, if you will, throughout the Midwest came out. A tech report on employment showed Indiana tech employment uh, uh, jumping up nicely, a couple percent in 2018. Indiana, I think, ranks, ranks 21st in the country in tech jobs. Right. So we hear a lot, we report a lot on, on tech jobs. It seems it's, it's kind of filtering out into the public now. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, obviously, the big names get a lot of the attention, right. whether it's Salesforce and some of the other announcements that you've covered, but there are a tremendous number of uh, smaller companies out there, not just in Indianapolis, around the yeah. state, and I think it's been impressive to see some of those mid-level communities, uh, the tech scene there growing, so whether it's Bloomington or mm -hmm. Lafayette or even up in South Bend. Yeah, it's a great point that uh, a lot of startup activity uh, around the state of Indiana and a focus, increasing focus on the Midwest. Um, uh, Steve Case, the AOL co-founder with his mm -hmm. Rise of the Rest, which is all focused on activity, not on the coast, but in the Midwestern part of, of the country, beginning to kind of get the attention uh, from folks. I think that's really interesting. And you know, I think part of what's driving it is, you know, 10 years ago, if you were in the tech industry, Silicon Valley was the natural mm -hmm. hub. Pricing and housing prices there have just gone through yeah. the roof. And I think the affordability crisis that we're seeing in a lot of the coastal cities is really causing people to think differently about mm -hmm. where they live. And Indianapolis is well positioned to be among the top cities when it comes to attracting talent, yeah. which is great. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd add too, and just to give it a little bit more context as well. So we're 38th Indiana in population. Uh, in, the, in the country, but we're now 21st, as you mentioned a moment ago, when it comes to, to net tech employment. Mm -hmm. And that really speaks to the fact that, that we're, we're becoming more and more a destination, right, yeah. for these types of, of high paying and high wage yeah. jobs. And so the, the focus is really going to have to continue to be on workforce development, making sure that we've got uh, the pool mm -hmm. of, uh, of employees to be able to uh, attract more uh, 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 more tech, uh, more tech mm -hmm. industry, and continue to be, uh, I, I think, um, uh, the the kind of destination place from a, from an economic standpoint, from a financial standpoint, um, uh, keeping the cost of living relatively um, relatively mm -hmm. low in comparison to many other places in the Midwest, and we're going to do well. Yeah, yeah, this competitive environment uh, out there. Certainly, another uh, tech uh, item this week was uh, Powder Keg, the tech, uh, tech networking platform that is growing not only in Indiana but around the country. Uh, going to be doing a big tech census of companies all over the state. It's going to focus on culture. And one of the things they found out uh, from a census they did last year it, the, is that the number one uh, determinant in someone taking a job at a tech company is culture, and that's the number one reason they may leave as well. Which is great, I think, in the sense that, uh, as Norris said, that positions us well for growth as we think about Indianapolis as a destination. If I'm making a decision about where to work and I'm looking at culture mm -hmm. as one of the key assets, Indianapolis has a great culture. I think the Midwestern friendliness is really part mm -hmm. of who we are. So if we can really kind of analyze what companies have to offer in terms of a healthy culture, more people are going to choose to come here, especially for tech jobs. When you talk about culture and inclusiveness and those types of things, we're going to jump ahead to a story we're going to touch on later. but. Uh, the hate crimes mm -hmm. uh, legislation at the state house had certainly been uh, in focus. There was an amendment uh, uh, placed on the bill uh, this week that would, I think, potentially get Indiana off this 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 small list of states without comprehensive hate crimes legislation. Where do you see, how do you see that ending, or where, how do you see Indiana coming out from a perception standpoint in that situation? Well, I think the good news when it comes to perception is that now we are off the list, and that's a powerful thing mm -hmm. when it comes to national perception. The bad news is we didn't really finish the job. Um, you know, when you talk about a comprehensive list of groups that are included in that legislation, we left out some really important groups, namely gender identity. Um, so I'm hopeful that in the future, lawmakers can revisit that um, and add gender identity in to make it a really 
really inclusive list so that everybody is part of protections. Yeah, I agree. I think in the in the next week or so, you'll see this issue get resolved at the state house real quickly, and and something will move on to the governor's desk. And I think you know in the future, perhaps as early as next session, you'll you know the business community will still come back wanting to uh, to expand those protections, um, as was mentioned, because uh, there's, there is a strong belief in the business community that we need to, mm -hmm. to have all the protections in place so that we do become a, uh, a state that, that attracts the top talent and mm -hmm. that we don't have these you know, speed bumps, if you will, right. uh, preventing people from coming here. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it strikes me that, that um, getting, first of all, getting off the bad list is a good thing, right? I mean, we can all agree on that. There's no doubt about it. Getting off the small list of states who had no protection at all uh, with regard to, 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 to hate crimes and biases is, is important. Um, but, but that certainly should not be where it ends. And, and part of the difficulty, it seems, from how, uh, from how long and sort of drawn out this process has been is that it may be the case that for many folks, that's all they really wanted to do, was to make mm -hmm. sure that we got off the bad list. And mm -hmm. as long as that's accomplished, uh, then, then it, it matters less, really, whether or not we, um, uh, we protect gender identity and, and, and so on. So, so we're going to have to revisit this, I yep. think, because a lot of folks still believe that there's work to be done here. Yep. Certainly talent, uh, workforce. Uh, development, huge issues in the state of Indiana. Interesting uh, partnership announced uh, this week in Fort Wayne. Mayor Tom Henry there announcing a partnership uh, with Shambaugh and Sons, uh, calling uh, essentially trying to create higher wage employment opportunities uh, in the city and the construction and other related fields. Uh, Norris, as you look at that, pretty creative uh, idea. And crea creative, exciting, really, yep. uh, Gary, I think in a lot of ways. And, and Mayor Henry really should be congratulated, first of all, for uh, the Fort Wayne United program, its focus on uh, on, on African American men and boys, and, and trying to make sure that um, that they can be included as much as possible in the workforce, and and um, and now you have this public private partnership with uh, uh, with Shambaugh and Sons mm -hmm. uh, for these. Um, Really, relatively well-paying yeah. jobs, uh, giving these folks an opportunity, I think, to uh, uh, to uh, to learn and and to grow mm -hmm. um, as individuals, knowing that they've got a job that's waiting for them after they mm -hmm. go through this three or four-month yeah. training period. Um, this really is exciting, and it shows what public-private partnerships can do to really sort of affect uh, positive change in a community. Yep. Uh, also, a unique uh, idea, if you will, in one of the state's top tourist attractions, the Children's Museum of Indianapolis, announcing more than 27 million dollar project. I essentially, they're getting paleontological, uh, uh, you know, they're getting artifacts, they'll call them that, yeah. Uh, and they essentially bought a site, right? They bought property in Wyoming. They're going to mine that and bring those artifacts back to Indiana. Yeah, which will add to yeah. what is already an amazing dinosphere class, exhibit. Right. Yeah, and I have to say, as the mother of a 16-month-old, I was not <laughs> interested in dinosaurs <laughs> yeah. until the last you year. Now. And now I am a dinosaur By fan. By the time they get here, you'll be really, I'll be really interested. I'll be really interested. Yeah, I've been yeah, to yeah. Dinosphere too many times to count. Very so. good. I'm just happy that I know what a Brachiosaurus is. <laughs> yeah. right. Very good, I Norris. That before, That's very so. good. As we wrap up, another big attraction, of course, is the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the Brickyard 400. It's got a longer name now. Right. I won't get into that. But um, the Brickyard 400 changing, going to the uh, July 4th weekend. Is that, knows, is, it might be in the 70s, <laughs> July 4th, right? Yeah. yeah. 120 Still degree heat index. Toasty. A good move. I mean, NASCAR, sure. you know, NASCAR and the Speedway both of them have been working together, trying to, to tweak and to do same things to get that attendance level. Right. No, I, th I think it is a good move. And I think, too, when you look at the big picture, you know, NASCAR potentially reducing the number of races in the season, it'll add right. even additional um, exposure and interest to it. And, you know, when you think about the 500 uh, being over Memorial Day weekend, and now you're going to have the 400 over the 4th of July weekend. It's almost like a uh, patriotic pole position of it, sorts, right? It is. Yeah. And then the, um, you know, the uh, the big drag race out at uh, out West right. is, is Labor Day weekend. Right. So we've got all the all the holiday weekends covered with racing. With that, yes. we'll end another Insiders uh, segment with Roger Harvey, Francesca Jarose Brady, and Norris Cunningham. Thank you, one and all. Thanks, Thank for you. Us. And we'll be right back after this.